and a super good morning and a happy Friday to each and every single one of you. As you can see from the background, it's still a bit hazy. The amount of Kalima is slowly but surely increasing. I'm hoping that it won't get too bad by the time we get to the weekend and I'm wanting to do some longer miles. But anyway, <clears throat> we get into the shade here slightly and also hopefully slightly sheltered from the wind and what I'm being sheltered by is, if you look behind me here there's a big poster that's put up, being put up or a big sign that's being put up with steel framing and everything about the brand new Orkiva courthouse that construction is due to begin on in during next year which I find incredibly ironic Orkheba is a town, a village, where the main core nucleus of the village is a population of 6,000 people. But the municipal area includes two or three of the surrounding villages, as well as all of the cortejos and fincas that surround this village and those surrounding villages to make the total population of about 10,000. Now the ironic thing is that Orkheba already has two courthouses. The one smaller courthouse, the older one, operates on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And the newer, only about a decade old, bigger courthouse operates on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays with the same staff in both. So it's not like the courthouse has been expanded out to be encapsulated in two buildings. No! What happens is they operate two courthouses doubling up the operation cost to be able to alternate between the two and now they're building another one that's going to be bigger than the second one and the reason why I know about the two being operated at different times on different days is Catalina passed away the time of death recorded as 11.30 p.m. on a Wednesday that made life incredibly difficult for me dealing with the red tape because while initially the papers were handed in at courthouse number one which operates on Tuesdays and Thursdays but because the time of death was recorded as being 11.30 p.m. on a Wednesday all of those documents got moved from courthouse number one to courthouse number two because that became courthouse number two's job and unbeknownst to me. So for the next phase of the um, judicial inquest, I duly arrived at courthouse number one for the, um, to listen in on what was happening at the inquest, only to be found out, no, it's, up, it's happening tomorrow at the other courthouse because the date of death has now been changed from Thursday to Wednesday. Go figure. Anyway, and now they want to build another courthouse for I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of euros and then go through the process of operating that one as well. Anyway, I need to get going. Speak to you later. Hey there, just a super quick update. The time is now 5 to 6 in the afternoon. Uh, my checklist, there are already eight items ticked off. Um, in half an hour's time, I've got a meeting with a young lass about 200 meters away from here, um, which is going to be just a meeting to discuss trivia matters. You can almost call it a social type of thing, with the added benefit of she's studying English, I'm studying Spanish, so which means it's what's referred to locally as an intercambio, which means that for want of a better word, the best way that I, that I can think of to 
describe it is it's a language exchange. In other words, I get to practice my Spanish with and she'll be helping out with the pronunciations when I go astray or helping me out with words that I may not know. And she'll be practicing her English. I'll be helping her out with the pronunciation and maybe helping her along the line with maybe a couple of words that may not be in her vocabulary, but it's done uh, in a more informal setting rather than a strict classroom setting and needing to learn verbs and tenses and grammatical perfection and such like. This is more of a casual conversation type of language exchange, but still equally valuable as far as improving language skills and from my side, integrating more into Spanish lifestyle. So that's what I've got coming up in about a half an hour's time. I just need to get myself a little bit ready, head off there, and I'll probably head up there slightly early, take my laptop with me and maybe bang out a few words while waiting. Anyway, with that said, speak to you a bit later. You never know, maybe she's comfortable on camera and I'll get a short interlude with the two of us together, but I cannot make any promises because obviously here in Spain, the rules and laws around um, filming anybody without their express permission are incredibly strict indeed. And a super good evening to each and every single one of you. Let me just get the business part of the my evening wrap up out of the way. Word count, 2,352. So I'm still hitting the 2,000 mark. What I will say is that when I get to start doing my living like Stephen King for a week, that could be somewhat challenging. It's gonna require a substantial shift and change to not only mindset but my daily routine because Stephen King likes to sit down between 8 and 8.30 in the morning and not get up and do anything before he's gotten six pages done. Now bearing in mind six pages from a novel's point of view, in other words six pages that you write in Scrivener is uh, in Scrivener, it's approximately 500 words to a page. A novel has got approximately 500 words a page. So if he's talking six pages, that's 3,000 words. So basically, sit down between 8 and 8.30 in the morning and not get up before 3,000 words are done. Which will be challenging for me, number one, because I like to get up really early in the morning and head out on a bike ride or a run while the uh, while it's still dark and catch the sunrise. There's no ways I can do that and be back at my desk by between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. So I may need to um, make some changes to my uh, morning exercise routine to be able to do so. It might involve going out when it's even darker in the morning and be back by between 7.30 and quarter to 8. And bearing in mind, sunrise at the moment is 8 o'clock. So it'll be getting back after my workout before the sun has even risen. That could be fairly challenging anyway. But that's uh, a challenge for another day. Um, the other thing that I can tell you is that 10 items in the checklist ticked off. What I will say is, with today being Friday, I'm not going to be setting up checklists like this for Saturday and Sunday because, for one, I'm going to be uh, my run, my running race in Travelers for Sunday has fallen through. So it means I've got an invite, a standing invite from the Trail Run Club in Granada. So I'm going to be through to Granada for the weekend doing some running and just basically recharging my batteries as much as I can and hit the ground running. I will have my laptop with me. I will be knocking out content, but I'm not going to be holding myself to strict checklists to be able to knock things out. Anyway, slight rant, not really a rant, but um, something we can talk about is a quotation from Margaret Atwood that applies really really well to blogging 
as long as you can see it in a uh, how should we say as long as you can see it in a metaphoric sense and not really the absolute literal sense but in within the metaphoric sense it makes absolute sense and I'm going to read the Margaret Atwood quotation to you so that I can get it absolutely right and not try and do it from memory and get one or two of the facts of her direct quote right. And I quote directly and I'm reading to you that if you're struggling to get started, it's because you're afraid of something. It's only you and the page. The waste paper basket is your friend. It was created by God so that you don't have to be afraid of the page. That I find incredibly insightful because I remember when I first start, got it started in blogging, not even starting with a blank page, each and every subheading I'd fret and stress over before I'd even put any words in the page. Which is why when I first started getting into blogging, it would take me between a week and two weeks to get one single blog post done of about one and a half thousand words. Because I was so afraid that my writing wouldn't be absolutely spot on and correct and perfect. Let's know the facts of the of the of the blog post. The facts of the blog post, I do all my research and everything, just the writing. I was so insecure about the quality of the writing that I was doing that it would take me a week to two weeks to do a one one and a half thousand word blog post. Now I'm writing two and a half thousand words a day. And the only way I got past that was not being afraid to put words onto the page. Because as soon as I started putting words into the page, the flow of the writing came to me and I was able to put more words on the page and the words I put onto the page while I'm in a flow state as far as my writing are concerned, invariably would be the best writing I could possibly do. I've had feedback from, from some of my, the readers of some of my blogs about the way I've used to describe something that helps them to make complete sense. For instance, I would describe uh, the, uh, how would, some aspect of running and but I would use something relating to the mechanics of a motor car to help explain what some other aspect of running to be able to make it make more sense. Or bringing in my personal anecdotes, failures and struggles that I've had with my own running that would, for instance, um, help to drive a point home of why a certain idea is maybe not a good idea anyway. But once I'm in the flow state, the words just go. But over my with for my first year of blogging, I hardly ever got into a flow state within my writing because I was so deathly afraid of putting anything on the page. And afraid of putting anything on the page unless it was perfect. And the truth is, those first blog posts that I ever wrote, they weren't perfect. They weren't, weren't even anywhere close to perfect, even though I was fretting over the words that I, was getting, that I wanted to use for a week or more. So, what can we learn from this? Don't be afraid of the page. The waste paper basket is your friend. In this case, the delete button, the backspace button, is your friend. And the waste paper basket has been created by God so that you don't have to be afraid of the page anymore. Wonderful words there from Margaret Atwood and definitely things something that we can all apply to our writing process, to our blogging process. 
And with that, I'm going to go and get myself a good night's rest, and I hope you are too. And we'll catch up with each other again on Monday morning, although there may be a couple of shorts appearing over the course of the weekend if I'm able to record something that's particularly interesting. So if you see something popping up in your short suite from me, give it a watch. It'll no doubt be something fun and lighthearted, even though it's coming out on this channel. Speak to you on Monday. Cheers.